Great Friday morning. How are you doing? This is your girl Shan. Happy Friday. I know that you have gotten up in an amazing mood. You are feeling good on today. You're looking forward to the weekend unless, you know, you got a job that you got to work doing. Anyway, whatever. I just hope that you're happy on today and that you are in a positive, appreciative mindset. So today's topic of the day that I will be talking about is I'm going to hold you down. Um, some are not mature enough for that level of loyalty. Okay. So how we say it is, I, I got your back. I'm going to hold you down. I'm going to hold you down. That's how we say it to show me. So I'm going to break it down for just a little, just a little small snippet. Because I know y'all like Sh Shan Wayne in the United States, you don't have to break what this mean down to me, but some people don't understand. And we do have people that listen in at different times from around the world. I'm not bragging on your girl. I'm just keeping it real. So I'm going to hold you down that my earliest recollection of what I'm going to hold. Did I say good morning to Shoni? I don't know if I did. Anyway, but my, my earliest level of recollection of I'm going to hold you down was growing up in the hood. Somebody goes to jail. When they go to jail, you know, you got people to say, hey, I'm going to hold you down. You know, I'm going to look after your kids. I'm going to look after your girl. I'm going to look after... Don't even let my mind go there. Anyway, hi, Aisha. So whatever you do, good morning, Brandy. I got your back is basically what it is. I'm going to start off talking to the singles real quick before I bring this around to marriage. Hey, Tasha. Um, There are too many singles. And let me add this caveat because I have to, you know, for professional reasons. Any conversation that I have on marriage mornings with the queen is not based off of Anything that I speak of in the counseling room with my clients. So let me put that out there because I don't do that. I don't get down like that. However, going back to what I was saying. So there are a lot of single people that I talk to, you know, mainly single females, of course, that says, you know, I don't understand. I held this joker down and you mean to tell me soon as I hold him down and he get to a level of wherever he desires to be in life, he no longer want me. I was the one that was doing this, doing this, doing that. You know, a lot of the times when we talk to the singles, what we tend to say is be very careful of putting yourself out there. I'm going to talk to the ladies real quick. Be very careful of putting yourself out there showing all the wifey potential that you have when you don't have no ring on your finger. Because there is too many women that I talk to that you are straight up hurt. You don't know if you ever want to be in a relationship anymore, whatever the case may be, because you're going to put all your wifey potential out there. And you right there to show me what you said. You're going to put all your wifey potential out there, but then you get mad when, oh boy, wife, somebody else. Can I be real on this morning? That's why I say, and I'm not trying to bash men or anything like that, but that's why I say you have people that are not ready for that level of loyalty when you say i got your back you know what i'm saying hey pop Jean. so bring it back around you got to be careful singles you really got to be careful you know there are so many people that god have created to have big hearts and they want to show that hey i am that one i'm the one i'm gonna be there for you this and this and this i've even Lord help me Jesus because I don't understand this. I, you know, I've been out the game for some time so I don't know. Maybe you got to school me to this new age stuff but I've even spoken to, to ladies, single ladies who said, you know so I was kicking it with this guy for about like eight nine years. I was holding him down and he ended up marrying somebody else and he still called me from time to time or you know on the phone he talked to me about his wife and all this other stuff. Baby girl, you you setting yourself up for failure. I'm going to need you not to do that because you're still finding that there is potential hope because you held this joker down. You didn't invest in so much time that this joker is going to come back around to you. Boo boo. If nobody has ever told you, I'm going to be that one to tell you right now, you messing yourself over and you may very well be because you're still trying to attach yourself to this individual that you've devoted so much time to and you've held them down, you very well may be blocking your own blessing of that man that God has for you. I don't know who that's for on this morning, but I'm just going to keep it real. <laughs> right what you said to show the girl you an amen corn honey <laughs> so that is so true so you have to understand that there are people whether it be male or female that are not ready for the level of commitment now of course i always when i think about a topic that god gives me or whatever the case may be i think about the scriptures that just pop up to the top of my head that goes along with it no i do not know every scripture of the bible but i was taught growing up in a church that you need to carry some scriptures with you because you never know when you gotta pull them things out to motivate yourself to make it through and so 
Um, people say do unto others as you will have them do unto you. That's scripture. Whatever you sow, you shall reap. You see what I'm saying? And the thing is, a lot of people are sowing so much into individuals who's not ready for that level of loyalty. And then you get mad. And then you say, hey, Miss D, you want marriage? Don't work. If, if I'm doing all this for this individual, I'm giving him the milk for free somebody this is keep it real friday then marriage don't work how would he do when i marry baby okay let me break it down because this is three things this is what i need us singles to know and i'm gonna bring it around to marriage because i've heard some married things as well okay this is what i need the singles to know i need you to know this this is what you need to look for before you start devoting your your level of lord loyalty to someone okay if that individual is selfish number one if they selfish and you are so loyal to them, you letting them know I'm holding you down. I got your back, baby. That's where you messing up. Hey, Fr girl, go Francesca from Alaska. Yes, God. Okay, sorry, y'all. Francesca usually. Anyway, so, <laughs> so if that individual is selfish, then baby, you might as well not want to throw your full investment into that. Okay, now that's one. Number two, hey, Cousin Kim. If the individual that you are trying to hold down has never had to work for anything in their life, baby, that's red flag number two. Red flag number one is if they selfish. Red flag number two is if they never had to work for anything. You know, no disrespect to any mama's boys or, 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 or daddy's girls or whatever the case may be. But if they have always been catered to, and this is why I agree with Bishop T.D. Jakes. Because he said that before I do, I'm telling you, I got to go back and get that series again. I let somebody borrow and they never gave it back. But anyway. He said in his series, look at the family, look at the family dynamic, look at the person in whom you like, love, whatever the case may be. I'm still kind of talking to the singles right now. Look at how they interact with their family. Do their family cater to them? Do they have to work for anything? Can they? Now, don't get me wrong. Family, we hold each other down. Good morning, Miss Miko. But look at how they interact. Is that individual baby by their family? Because if they are, even if that joker do ask you to marry him and you holding them down and everything like that, you got to understand that, baby, you're going to be a second class citizen no matter how much you hold them down because they are used to, for all these years of life, being catered to. Okay? So that's the second red flag. The third red flag. Okay? Hey, Shundra. Is if you are, you know, putting all your eggs in one basket, you holding this joker down and they always, this person always have to be the center of attention. It could be your doggone graduation from college. You done graduated with your doctorate, but somehow in the midst of that party, they're going to always flip it back around to them. If they always have to be the center of attention, baby, let me tell you that lines up with every other red flag that I just said. And I know the three of them, you going to have issues when you hold that individual down. Now, giving you share, receive, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This is something else that we need to kind of look at. You know what I'm saying? If you're single, you're looking at an individual, you ain't even got to say nothing because I'm telling you, and it was a meme, I think I'll post it today, but it was a meme saying the things that you put up with when you date is going to be the very, the red flags that you ignore when you date will be the very same things that you will argue over when you get married. So when you're in the dating experience, don't be sitting up here telling me you're going to hold the joker down, but then you sitting up here and you done got mad because they decide to marry somebody else and not you because you are holding them down and they are not reciprocating the same. Let me tell you what I know to be a good husband or a good wife. A good husband or a good wife is an individual that baby, when you sow into them, you support them, you got their back, you showing up to the functions, the family reunions and everything like that. Baby, they're doing the same thing when it comes to you, baby. What you got going on? Have y'all ever noticed the term power couple? In a power couple, the both of them support each other. In a power couple, the both of them do unto, you know, their spouse is they would like to be done unto them. You know what I'm saying? They are sowing into the seeds of good ground of their spouse because they want their spouse to do the same thing to them. That is a power couple. That's how you can work together. See, this is, oh Lord, God take me here. I'm going. This is something that I would encourage couples to do, especially ones where you got, you know, the husband and the wife, you fighting for power and everything like that. Or, and, and you having this argument in your marriage, somebody going, yeah, don't tell on yourself. I always say to just put your hand up. I ain't going to see you. Just put your hand out. Um, but you having this argument, I always do for you. I'm always supporting you. I'm always, every time you need something, I didn't help you in the military. I didn't help you get everything you need. But when it come to me, you can't do nothing 
nothing for me. When it's your birthday, I make it a big deal. When we celebrate something you doing, I make it a big deal. But you can't even go to extra set somebody that had that argument. I didn't just probably quoted it verbatim. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes when we're so deep in the midst of our situations, especially when we argue with husbands and wives, what we need to do is look at our situation as if we were a person looking from the outside in. Pray, look at the situation and you will see so much clarity. Okay. Now, if for those who I was talking about yesterday, you in that stuck place in your marriage or you in that stuck place in your life, but let's, let's, you know, I talk to the singles. Let me go ahead and talk to the married. Hey, Cheryl, you in that stuck place in your marriage and things like that. And I don't understand. I give, 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 but I never get nothing in return. Baby, let me ask you something. Remember, I just said something about a meme. What red flags did you ignore in order to say I do? And now you arguing over them joints. Mm -hmm. What red flags did you ignore? Because you've seen it in the beginning. Because sometimes, especially as women, we so emotional and so wrapped up in love. And oh, he loved me. She loved me. We could deal with that later. Baby, that's going to be your headache later. So singles, address that stuff right there in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to hold nobody to no high level. But no, if you sewing it to this person and you supporting this person like none other and you holding them down and they ain't doing the same thing to you, baby, you're going to have those same issues in your marriage. I'm just saying. So... <clears throat> The one of the things why I was so, you know, easy with me and my husband is because in a sense, we kind of have the same heart. We have a heart for people. We like to help people. We like to see the best in people. And when it comes to us, I support him. He fully support me. A lot of y'all have those issues in your marriage right now. A lot of y'all, oh Lord, God gave me some. A lot of y'all be arguing with your spouse because your spouse can't go out and support everybody else, but they can't never support you. You didn't have that same argument. Well, when your homeboy call you to do something, then you jumping up and you over there doing it. But when it come to me, but this is what I need us to think about. And I ain't talking about nobody's husband and wife on today because this is equal opportunity. But this is what I need us to think about. Is it that sometimes in marriage, we have this, um, uh, fake, I don't know what to even call it, that once I put that ring on your finger and I said I do and we've been living this together for so long, I already got you. So I'm not worried about that. But one of the three red flags that I said, if that joker is selfish, they have a selfish personality. It's all about self. Anytime you talk to anybody that has known them for some time and, and they, hey, describe, you know, describe my husband. Oh, that joker's selfish. That joker has always been selfish. It's somebody that's going to speak the truth. That's a red flag. You know what I'm saying? That you may have ignored. You know your spouse is selfish and they all about self. So how can you expect, uh, what did the, they used to say? Something about trying to pull something out of a turnip. It was old country saying. But how can you expect for your spouse to reciprocate the things that you sow into them, you hold them down, if you married them and they were selfish? Now, God can make all things new and God can change. And that's going to take a whole lot of prayer for, you know what I'm saying? So that's only you that can pray to God and say, God, can you help change the situation? But if they selfish, if they've never had to work for anything, I'm going to give a good example. And I ain't bagging on nobody's mama, but mama has always, this is a true mama's boy. I'm going speak, to speak from a wife's perspective. It can go either way. But this is a true mama's boy. He ain't never had to work for anything. Baby, this joke is a whole 55 years old. And right now, if he pick up the phone and say, mama, mama going to give, do, and everything. Maybe that's because mama, you know, I ain't talking about the ones who hold their they sons down because somebody going to get in their feelings. Hey, Alice, how you doing, sir? I'm talking about he pick up the phone. Oh, mama, I sure would like these new pair of Jordans, mama. I was just wondering, can you get them for me? Oh, baby don't worry about it i'll send you the money you can go pick it up what no i ain't talking about mama i'm about to lose my house or mama i can't pay the rent some real serious stuff i'm talking about some little penny any stuff and she taking care of him like he his man or like he her man and then you know oh well that's my baby okay i understand i got boys them are my babies and stuff too but guess what Mama ain't going to be doing that because, baby, if you want them kicks, you're going to have to get out there and do what you got to do. You're going to have to sell your little coins or whatever. I'm not buying you kicks on a whim. You see what I'm saying? So if he's never had to work for anything because all he got to do or all she got to do is pick up the phone. Um, uh, yeah, I seen this new purse and daddy, I was just wondering if you could buy that purse from me. Sure, princess. What in the John Brown? You 60 years old. Girl, you better go on out there. Anyway, I digress. You've seen this. Some of you who are single are dating somebody who's just like this, but in your mind, you're lying to yourself and you saying, I'm going to keep holding them down. But when we get married, that's going to change. No, baby. No, baby. Uh-uh. Somebody who always got to be the center of attention. 
You're going to have some issues if you are always holding them down. You know what I'm saying? And they always got to be the center of attention. I don't know who I'm talking to on this morning. Some of y'all have argued about this in y'all's marriage. Some of y'all still arguing about this in y'all's marriage. Keep in mind, you may have married an individual who's never had the, um, had never been taught how to be a blessing to somebody else. They don't know how to do it, but you mad at them for some things that they've never been taught. They never had to do it. You know, they mama never said, you seen that old lady over there, go over there and hold open that door so that lady can come on out with them groceries in her hand. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you see such and such over here. Yeah. Go they may, they may have never been taught, but then you mad. And so what we don't understand is what we tend to do is when we are holding a joker down who don't know how to hold us down, we probably take in the place of somebody in their family. So, uh, single ladies, let me, let me holler at you. Mama has probably always taken care of him. He was a mama's boy. He was sleeping on mama's couch. Heck, he might have been sharing mama bed, but not in that way. You know what I'm saying? It's nasty. But you know what I'm saying? And then he was a whole hobo sexual. When the opportunity to present itself, he made it seem like he fell mad in love with him. And, you know, sometimes what we do is God shows us the potential of our spouse. But we have to understand that, yes, or, or a family member, God shows us the full potential. But what we do is we throw everything at them to try to help them to to succeed but if they're not willing to do it on their own the one who gets hurt is us so that's where prayer come in that's where having a relationship with god come in single ladies single dudes i encourage you don't get upset when you allow yourself to be in a relationship with somebody for a whole nine years. They cool where they are. They love the fact that you hold them down. Every time they ask you for $40 for some gas money, baby, you there. You're depleting your whole savings account trying to put somebody through school, whatever the case may be. And I can't stand this. I'm going to talk about this real quick. I cannot stand. And I've seen this with single individuals and I've seen this with individuals who is married. And I'm going to tell you this. If you treat people like this, God knows all and he sees all. He sees what you're doing. And you can't expect a blessing from God if you're sitting up treating people like this and you using them, you manipulating them. That's what you're doing. Okay. So when you sitting up here crying, why am I going through all this? You reap what you sow. That's what I'm going to say. I can't stand a person. Let's say you dating. They had this whole conversation. Because this is just me. This was just Shan. I ain't telling nobody what to do. But Shan wasn't trying to make no serious moves and treat. I wasn't trying to treat Kenya the king like my husband or whatever the case may be. When he went, no, no, no. We need to have some... C O M M I commitment. You see what I'm saying? There was no commitment. I'm not going to be giving you all of me and there is no commitment. And I mean, commitment as wife. Okay. I don't want to get into too much because I'm thinking about, uh, our show that's coming up Monday that we're going to be talking about. I will let you know in case you want to tune in at 7 PM Central Standard Time on KRG and FM, you know, I had to plug that in there. I will let you know that one of our supporters, reached out to us and she was asking about long-term relationship because she in a long-term relationship. How long do you have to be in a relationship before you say I do? Anyway, that's a whole nother situation. We're going to be talking about that on Monday show. So that's why I don't want to tap too much into that in preparation of. But you sitting up here, you holding somebody down and you are so mad at the individual. Baby, they're being the best. They're being who they are. But I can't stand when you set up here and you got somebody that's supporting you and they holding you down. I've seen this in the military. No shade, but I'm going to keep it real. Where, let's say husband and wife, you got the husband, he done made all the rank, he done made it up here. You know, you got the wife, baby. She was with you in the beginning, in the trenches. You hear me? When you didn't have nothing, when you was a private, when them coins, when that money was looking funny and that change was looking strange. You see what I'm saying? She had you down. She was budgeting. Oh, baby, we may can't do this right now, but baby, yep, I can go get some groceries. We only got $100. But then when you done made it all the way up to general, you done made it all the way up to sergeant major or whatever the case may be, the highest right then you decide you no longer want to be with her but she's the one that put your uniform together she's the one uh and i talked talk about it from a civilian aspect 
She supported you through school. She was the one that was scrimping and saving pennies so you could pay tuition. So that way there will be no debt because she invested in you as your wife because that's what's supposed to take place because she's seen the end result. When my baby get this degree, he's going to be able to get this job and it's going to bless us as a family. And so I can't stand to see individuals that you didn't have your spouse hold you down. But then when you get to where you wanted to be and this person that been in the trenches with you, then all of a sudden you don't love them anymore. All of a sudden you're interested in someone else. All of a sudden, that person's not good enough for you anymore. I've seen wives do this. You done went ahead and got your whole degree, but your husband ain't good enough. But he was there for you, and he was making sure that them doggone kids was bathed, and they was clean, and all that stuff, so you could study. You see what I'm saying? Hey, Patricia, how do we do this in marriage? That ain't what marriage is. Let me tell you what marriage is. Do unto your spouse as you would have your spouse do unto you. You sow into them because you will want them to sow back into you the same. That which you sow into your spouse, you shall reap, okay? That's what the old heads used to teach the young men back in the day when I used to hear, hey, listen here, young buck. This is what the old heads used to say. You take care of that young lady right there. You take care of your wife because I'm telling you, when you get older, baby, she going to take care of you. Me and my, let me, let me talk about this real quick. Make sure I ain't keeping y'all too long. Me and my children was in Golden Corral because, uh, our son graduated eighth grade, whatever the case might be. We was in Golden Corral and I seen this lady. It was an Asian lady and it was a white man, right? And he was on the walker and I'm thinking, I don't know. He was shaking really, really bad. So really bad. So I don't want to speak, you know, what I think that he might've had, but he had some type of health condition. And so when he came in, it was a struggle for him to walk on that walker, but his wife was right there beside him every step of the way. You see what I'm saying? And walking and walking and walking. So she helped sit him down. She went to go get this man, his food. She went to go get her husband, his food. She fixed his plate first. He was shaking so bad that he couldn't even grasp the food. I wish I could have recorded them. I really wish, you know, I could have, but I didn't want them to think I was stalking a stranger, but I thought it was beautiful. And so she went and made his plate. She made her plate. And then when he was sitting there, she took and put the little napkin up around him and she fed her husband his food. See, let me tell you where I see people mess up in marriage. You don't realize and appreciate the person that's holding you down. You see what I'm saying? You, you, oh, 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 you think that they, that you better than once you done arrived and you done made it. And so you switch them out. The ones who was in the trenches, your husband and your wife for a newer model, but you don't understand, baby, when somebody to put in the work to support you, they going to ride with you to the end and see what you do is you switch your husband and your wife out for a newer model because now you think or upgrade as they say because now you think that you can find better and yeah I'm a lawyer now I didn't pass the bar even though my ex-wife helped me study and do all the things and purchase the book and help me through law school but now this other lawyer she's better than my but baby you end up marrying this buckethead chick, chick or whatever the case may be and she don't have that same grit and that loyalty to you as your ex-wife did and so you talk down your ex-wife or you talk down your ex-husband and you tell them that you're not good enough and you were never good enough, but them are the same ones who was helping to bless you. See, the devil sets things up really well. And when you make it to where God wants you to make it, you can't even make it to the next level beyond that because the devil will get in your ear and tell you that your spouse is no longer good enough. The one that's been holding you down. You see what I'm saying? And so you go off and marry somebody else and you go off and you treat them like trash your ex and then you you get mad because what started off good for you with this next level this next person that the devil presented to you is no longer working and guess what the one that was holding you down your ex-husband and your ex-wife then God begins to bless them and they begin to be more happy than what they were when they were with you Shan what are you saying on the day what I'm saying is look here if you that selfish husband you that self-centered husband. You the one that always got to be the center of attention. You can never reciprocate and sew back into your spouse the way that they've support, uh, supported, sold into you, had your back, made you look like the man, made you look like the woman, put you up on a pedestal that God has created for you to be on as a husband or a wife. 
and you don't realize what you got, then don't get mad when you lose it. You see what I'm saying? Because like I said, God knows all and he sees all. So what I would encourage you to do, if you're this selfish individual, you this mama boy, this daddy girl, you always like to be the center of attention or whatever. What I encourage you to do is start sowing into your husband and your wife the way that they sow into you. You see what I'm saying? Recognize and realize what you have. Appreciate what you have. Because that's the only way you can be a quote-unquote power couple if you both are support, supporting and holding each other down and sewing into each other. You see what I'm saying? Singles, word to the wise. You got to look at these red flags, baby, because like that meme say, that what you choose to ignore, you're going to be arguing about in your marriage. And those who are on here, <laughs> baby, let me tell on myself. Let me tell on myself because, baby, there were some things that I ignored from my husband. There were some things I'm sure he ignored from me. And we was arguing about them very same things later, okay? So somebody on here who's been married a good country while can tell you that your girl Shannon is not lying. So if you're going to hold somebody down, that's just like your money. You wouldn't invest into a janky bank. You see what I'm saying? That's going to steal your money and everything like that. You wouldn't do that. You would invest into the seeds of good soil, good ground, like the word of God says. You would invest in something good that you would get a good return. Now, you don't just invest so you can get a return, but God knows all and he sees all. So he's going to bless you according to your investment. So bottom line. Be careful, singles. If you marry, I need you not to be selfish if you're selfish. Don't get mad at your spouse. If you're one who you're always pouring and you having this argument with your spouse, get to praying because they probably ain't going to hear you, the words coming out of your mouth. Get to praying that God will reveal them to them and reveal you to you. Don't leave yourself out of it either, okay? So, there are so many that are holding people down and Shane, you don't understand. I got that back and whatever the case may be. And then you mad because that person don't treat you the way that you treat them. That's something that you got to look at, baby. You can get mad at them all you want, but what is it that you're doing? Okay. Don't allow yourself to be so gullible in the single stage. If you're married right now, you're at a point where you can't do nothing but cast your cares upon God because he cares for you. Scripture. <laughs> all right. So think about this thing. Y'all have a blessed weekend. Don't let anybody steal your joy. Be a blessing to somebody today and not curse. Share this because it's free. Your girl Shannon will be back with you on Monday with whatever it is that God placed in my heart. So God bless you and blessings to you.